Welcome back, everybody, to the Westlake Hornets team builder dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. As today, season 10, a new season of Westlake Hornet football is set to kick off. And we've got the number one ranked Hornets taking on their rival, the Utah State Aggies. This is the third straight year these two teams have faced off on opening day, Westlake winning convincingly the past two seasons. But this is actually the school's first time in history starting the season ranked at number one. The Hornets are championship favorites according to many betting sites, but can the Hornets actually do it? Will this finally be their year? They've been in contention for the past, I'd say, four seasons, including an appearance many years ago back in season six, which obviously Westlake should have won that game, and they brutally choked against Penn State. And this Hornets team is very well disciplined, led by head coach Mason Conway, but they have a suspension on their hands. Cornerback Josh Wilson has been suspended for the first half of today's game. Wilson, a redshirt senior superstar who won the Jim Thorpe Award, was caught cheating on a project in class, and he will not be playing in the first half. There he is, however, at the coin toss. And assuming Wesley does put in their backups for the second half like they normally do against Utah State, expect to see Josh Wilson on the field. So it won't really be a suspension, but it technically is. Do good in the classroom, kids. Usually, Westlake starts on defense. Today, they will start on offense. And that is how season number 10 will kick off. The redshirt sophomore, Ulri Ayaluko, taking it out of the end zone. Ayaluko has a few blocks. He's off to the races. No flags. Welcome to the new season of Hornet football. 102 yards down the field for Ulri Ayaluko. And 11 seconds into the game, Westlake is already on the board. This is your Sean Briggs re replacement at kick returner. And my goodness, is this the impression that he wanted to start off with at this position. Ori Luca was great last year at wide receiver, second on the team in receiving yards. But it's good to see him doing big impacts in the kick return game. Meanwhile, look at this box score. Colorado with six receiving touchdowns from Mitchell, seven from Edwards. They beat their rival Colorado State despite six touchdown passes from Wiley. So the Buffaloes escape in a high-scoring rivalry game to kick off the year. Utah State has a new head coach, Matt Wells, making his debut today. And it's not the start he wanted. We can leave it at that. Here's Neil on first down. Nice pass for Brian, who's wide open. That's Brian Bryan. That is his actual name for a gain of 22. First, it was George Bush on this Utah receiving core a few years ago. Utah State receiving core, sorry. And now it's Brian Bryan. First down, there's Brett Jackson losing four, courteous of Justin McGee. They're going to get the tackle to Harvey, but I would say that was McGee, the new middle linebacker, making more of that play. So now here's the Westlake offense coming out for the first time today, even though they are already winning. This Westlake offense has a few position battles going on. It's slot wide receiver and starting running back. Neither of those have been decided, but today will sort of be an audition day for those guys competing for those spots to see who could become the starters. And we'll probably have a better idea next week headed into the Illinois game as there's the senior connection of Curtis and Wiggins for a gain of 17 and a Westlake first down. Westlake is no stranger, if you will, to positional additions. Remember, back in Season 4, uh, Westlake had a three-way race for starting running back. The battle actually lasted a few weeks. However, it was Alex Ellis, a Richard freshman at the time, who won the position battle. And now, Alex Ellis has more rushing touchdowns than anybody in the history of college football. Second and ten, here's Daly with a nice first down. Daly is the favorite to win the starting running back job. He has the most experience by far of anyone on this roster. He's been great as a change of pace back, but we'll see if he's more than just that. Patrick Daly's main competitor for the starting running back job is Jason Gibbs, number 39, who is in the backfield here on this play. Nigel Wiggins in motion. He will join Curtis and Gibbs in the backfield, as it's going to be an option, and it does not work. Curtis loses two. But that play could have been a lot worse. Westlake has had a big problem in the past with option tosses, and that's a play where the Hornets could have tossed it and lost it, so good thing they didn't. So far, looking at the running back position battle, Patrick Daly is looking good early. Three, ca three carries for 32 yards. All three of his rushes have been for at least nine yards. Jason Gibbs has yet to get a touch up to this point. 
Gibbs with a nice block here on first down as Curtis looking for Daly in the end zone and it's caught for a Westlake touchdown. Have yourself a start Patrick Daly over 50 yards of scrimmage on the drive and him along with these Westlake Hornets are looking good early. Four minutes into this game and Westlake is unsurprisingly looking very good in all three phases, special teams, defense, and offense. Not much else you can ask for right now if you're a Westlake fan as Jacob Neal going down for a loss of three. Who is the first player to get a sack here in Westlake season 10? The answer is Steve Harvey. That'll get some points on Jeopardy. I know that's the run Steve Harvey game show, but I don't know how to fit a family feud thing in there. Westlake's best defensive back here so far in season 10. What do the voters say? I guess they would say Steve Harvey, but that doesn't say much because we're four and a half minutes into the season. Second and 13, here's Neal. He's picked off by Marcus Jones. Maybe we have a different best defensive back now, ladies and gentlemen, as Jones, the new starter at Strong Safety, picks it off. Jones got a little bit of playing time last year in the Utah State game where he actually did record an interception, so this is the second of his career. A lot of Westlake fans sort of questioned them starting a guy like Marcus Jones at Strong Safety, but in the limited time he's gotten, he's played really well so far, and he's, unless he declares for the draft or something, he'll be on this defense for another two years after this season. So he has three years of eligibility left. It's a shame Curtis and Wiggins only have one more year left. But we still get another year of these two guys doing big things. Peyton Curtis to Nigel Wiggins in the back of the end zone. Hornets extend their already large lead. Usually when these two teams play, Westlake puts in their second stringers by the start of the second half. I don't even know if we'll make it that, that far until these two, until Westlake has to put in their backups. But maybe I might have spoken a little bit too soon. Nice 18-yard screen for Brett Jackson bringing Utah inside the 10. The Aggies are having themselves a nice little drive here. Maybe, just maybe, they can put up some points and make this game a little bit closer. Neal, looking, he is Kevin Parker for the touchdown. Is Utah State back in this game? Eh, probably not, but it's a little bit closer nonetheless. Westlake's offense has been as good as advertised today. Peyton Curtis looks like himself. Patrick Daly's playing really well. Nigel Wiggins is back to form. Aurier Luka's gotten a good start. This team looks like they're locked and loaded to score plenty more points. As there's Nigel Wiggins with the reception running into the defender. I think he was trying to get around him for a big gain. But hey, 18 yards ain't bad. As Nigel Wiggins is very close to the school's uh, all-time receiving touchdown record. I believe he's only two or three away from tying Everett Lemieux, who graduated, what, back in season eight, I want to say? Westlake's offense is already at the 45. This unit truly has been flawless to start today's game. As here's Curtis. He's going to look deep for Nigel Wiggins again, who burns Ricardo Bush, the senior corner, and is tackled after a gain of 50. Curtis and Wiggins continue to dominate. This core has been lighting up defenses since these two were freshmen, and today has been no different. Nigel already over the 100 yards mark. Four catches, 111 yards, and a touchdown. That is the stat line so far today for Nigel Wiggins. We're not even out of the first quarter. Second and goal. Curtis looking. End zone. Guess who it is? Nigel Wiggins with his second score of the quarter. And Westlake extends their lead. Peyton Curtis with three passing touchdowns so far today. Two of them to Wiggins. That was an extremely risky pass. Number 27 could have made a play on that ball. Utah State's offense was able to put up some points on their last drive, but I think they're going to need to put up a lot of points in this game. They want any chance of winning. Here's Neal under some pressure. He is brought down by Marcus Shelton and Cole Spencer. I don't really know what Neal is trying to do there. That was more of a bad offensive play rather than a good defensive play. That's how the first quarter is going to end. We've got ourselves an absolute blowout. Westlake leads it 28-7. 35 points in one quarter. That is a lot. Second quarter underway now, and we've got a massacre so far here in Burmester. Westlake leads it 28-7. Utah State has it here. Second and 14 after the sack by Shelton as it's going to be a screen over to Jackson. Utah State has loved the screens today, and this one is successful. He gains 18 before being pushed out by Justin McGee. Jacob Neal is 10 for 12 today. 
And Utah State's offense has not really been bad at all. It's just that their defense has been utterly atrocious. Second down, Neal is sacked by Justin McGee. He's been solid so far. He's no Owen Jackson, but he's played pretty well in his first career start. It's fourth and 17. What the hell does Utah State have to lose? They are faking the punt. I can't really blame them. This isn't an awful decision. You're down 21 against the top team in the country. You might as well fake it. So credit to them for being gutsy. It doesn't work. That's a ballsy call. From a rookie head coach in Matt Wells, I fully respect the call to fake the punt. I don't think that was a bad decision whatsoever. Now a second and eight. Curtis looking deep for guess who? Nigel Wiggins! His third touchdown of the day, which ties a school record. Oh, did I forget to tell you we're not even two minutes into the second quarter. Curtis and Wiggins are popping off right now. Nigel Wiggins looks like an absolute madman right now, and Peyton Curtis hasn't done too bad himself. Four touchdowns so far today, as here's Neil scrambling. Nice first down before being lassoed to the ground by Khan, but a nice 18-yard run for the quarterback. Westlake only has five receivers on the roster who are not being redshirted, and they love to run four receiver sets, so even in the second half when the backups are in, Nigel Wiggins is still going to get a ton of playing time in this game, even without a lot of the starters in, as there's Neal being sacked by the sophomore Octavius October, one of the few players on this roster who has not been redshirted, believe it or not. Octavius was a starter last year as a true freshman, and his younger brother Kez October committed last year, so now there's two October brothers at defensive tackle. Third and 13, that pass is intercepted right into the hands of Lewis Kahn. And Westlake has really good starting field position on this drive. Kanye is a super explosive athlete. I thought he was taking that one the distance. But still a nice INT from the sophomore linebacker. And Westlake has a chance to make this a 35-point lead. All I'm going to say right now is credit to Utah State for not getting shut out. Also, we're at the 420 mark. 420 blaze it. Second and one. There's Ronald Yunyan motion. Handoff for Tim Beck. He's not really in the starting running back conversation. But shoot, maybe he plays into it. As he gets 12 on his first carry of the season. Better than Jason Beck, who, or Jason Gibbs, sorry, who only has two yards. Westlake is now in the goal line. It is first down from about the nine. Curtis looking to throw it, and he connects with guess who? Nigel Wiggins for the touchdown. Wiggins with his fourth receiving touchdown today, which breaks a school record for most in a game, and we're still in the first half. Might I mention, I'm pretty sure he's passed Everett Lemieux for most receiving touchdowns in school history. Curtis now at five passing scores in this first half as well, which has to be near a school record. Aiton Curtis has a passer rating of 388 right now. To put that in perspective, the college football record in his season is 200, which was set a few years back by, guess who, Champ Britton. As there's Cole Spencer with his first of likely many sacks on the season. That one will pass... Uh, his own record for most in school history. Woohoo, I guess. But he's close to the all-time record. I think he's probably only like seven away, so he's definitely going to get that this season. Utah State is past the 50. Maybe they can get double-digit points before the half ends as Jacob Neal running for the, rolling over for the first down. All he's done this drive is run the ball. And I mean, I guess it's working because they're moving it. All Utah State has done is QB runs, and I don't think they're designed QB runs either. I think that just shows you how good Westlake's coverage has been. As there's Neal being sacked by Cole Spencer, his second in the game and 49th of the career. And by the way, he did not play as a freshman. So that's 49 in the past two and like a 24th of the season. Second and 21 after the 11 yard loss, courteous of the senior Cole Spencer. Crazy to think he's not gonna be on this defense next year. Westlake senior class is quite big. Guys like Curtis, Wiggins, Wilson, Spencer, who gets now his third sack, if he can bring him down, there he goes. Cole Spencer with sack number three of this game, and they've all come within like the past minute or two. I think that's a new quarterback in too. Jacob Neal must have got hurt on the previous play. Jacob Neal has a foot sprain. He'll be fine to return, but man, he's gotten an absolute beating today. Third and 24, it'll be Stewart looking to throw it. Stewart. Has time, not really, that's Delvin Hines, the freshman, with the sack and the fumble force. 
Hines is a backup. I guess he's just getting a snap instead of Ray Johnson. And that's definitely one how you want to start your collegiate career. His first career play, and he rips it out of the QB's hands. So that is a set of three straight sacks for Westlake's D. For the most part, Westlake has all of their backups in, or at least all the positions where there is enough depth to put in backups. That includes quarterback, where we see redshirt freshman Stephen Westwood. Westwood has a chance next season to replace Peyton Curtis as the starter. He'll have to complete, compete with Rodney Allen for that spot. As here's Westwood, his first completion is over to Curtis Vincent, who's trying to win the slot receiver job. He gains 29, which is more than the amount of yards that Frank Bray has announced today. Bray has one catch for 15 yards. That's a good start for Vincent, who only played a few downs in the first half. Westlake now has it at the goal line. They're going to try to make it a 42-point lead. With still five minutes left in the third, let's see if they can do it. Handoff for Jason Gibbs, who makes a nifty move on a pair of defenders for the touchdown. Westlake's first rushing score of the season comes from Jason Gibbs. Who knows how many touchdowns we'll see from him this season. Westlake extends their lead. We had quite the game out in Madison, Wisconsin, but number 12 Oklahoma Sooners defeat the number 15 Wisconsin Badgers by a score of 28 to 21. Westlake's offense is looking totally in sync with Steven Westwood. I mean, that's not really too much of a surprise. This offense is kind of stacked with weapons. But Steven is looking good up to this point. He's known as one of the fastest quarterbacks in the country. And he showed off his speed on that play. Most QBs would have lost about 5 yards. He gained 13. Regardless of who wins the QB battle next year between Steven Westwood and Rodney Allen, Westlake is going to have a fast man under center. Those two are two of the fastest QBs in the country. First and goal, Westwood's first career passing touchdown will come to guess who? Nigel Wiggins, his 10th catch of the game, his 5th for a touchdown. Now, those, these two won't have too long of a connection with Wiggins graduating at the end of the year. Ever since this game actually became a blowout, it seems a majority of Utah State's plays have been passing plays where Jacob Neal is scrambling like a madman and has to run with it. Here's another example. Octavius October forces the ball out. Delvin Hines recovers it. And this is exactly what Utah State's offense has been today. The only difference is Jacob Neal does not run right in the middle of the offensive line. At least he's scrambling and making a play. That time it didn't really work out. Westlake gets the ball back. Now that we are kicking off the fourth quarter, I expect Westlake to chew the clock but I don't expect Westlake to only run the ball. I think they want to see more of what Steven Westwood can do. Here's Westwood. He will be sacked on second down for a loss of 14. Utah State's first sack of the game, and it's by Neil Nicholson, the left end, getting by the right tackle, Dwayne Morton. Morton is a backup at that right tackle spot, and I don't really know when he will get an opportunity to start in the next few years, especially with J.B. Gibbons at that right tackle spot, who is also a freshman. Third and 17 now, Westwood up the middle, and it's caught by Curtis Vincent for a first down, and a big gain for Westlake, as Vincent with a huge reception. Excellent throw from Westwood, a little bit risky. Safety could have made a play, but still a nice first down nonetheless. Third and four for Westlake. If they don't get this first down, we'll likely see the field goal unit out for the first time in this game. Westwood is flattened to his back by Jim Johnson. His second tackle for loss of the game. He was trying to pass it to Gibbs, but couldn't get it off in time. Kirk Gantz is 8 for 8 when it comes to extra points today. Now a field goal attempt. From 37, it is good. And Westlake is now up 59 to 7. After four minutes to go, it looks like Westlake's offense has really calmed down. I don't think we'll see them run up the score too, too much. On his own first down, short pass for Brett Jackson. He loses five. The backup senior linebacker, Tremaine Cade, is there with the tackle. Blake could have chewed the clock and, and end the game, but instead, they let Steven Westwood get a few more throws, hence why there's still a minute left, and Westlake still has to score some more points. As on fourth down, Volker Guns makes the 39-yard kick. Hornets now up by 55. Before we talk about the game, I'd like to point out that all the fans were here the entire time. They didn't leave towards the end even though it was over. And either A, they're extremely loyal and passionate, or B, they're just morons who are idiots and not trying to beat out the traffic. 
Anyway, dominant we are win here on opening day. Westlake wins this one by 55. They probably could have won by more if they were trying in the fourth quarter. But nonetheless, a great game for the Hornets. Nigel Wiggins with five receiving touchdowns. All of which, did he have all five of them in the first half? I know he had the first four. I'm pretty sure he did have five in the first half. Nonetheless, great win for Westlake. Next week, they head out to Champaign to take on our good friends, the Illinois Fighting Illini.